Hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. I thought today I would talk about uh, your calling in life. What is it that you are called to do? And why most of us miss our callings in life uh, because of the influences that we get from outside. It is very important, you know, because as long as you don't realize your calling, you will never be a success. Even if you are called to be like a pharaoh. The book of Genesis tells us that pharaoh was raised for that particular purpose, to be an impediment, to be a problem, to be in the thorn in the flesh, the thorn in the flesh of uh, uh, the children of Israel. There is a reason. Even Hitler was raised for a reason. Haman was raised for a reason, so that when he he died, uh, Mordecai was raised. So today we're going to look at Second Peter one ten and then 2 Corinthians 12, 12, and then Romans 12, 5, which talk about what is it that you were called to do. So let's just read the, the, the scripture, the first scripture. Wherefore, there are the brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. If you do these things, you shall never for so it is important brother and sister to realize that your calling has nothing to do with your mother with your father with your pastor with your wife but it is a calling that was given a bespoke calling a tailor-made calling into what you're supposed to be doing in this life and many times we sort of fashion ourselves to uh, celebrities and so forth, pastors, I want to be like my pastor, I want to be like my pastor's wife. That is all all right, but the thing of it is you miss your calling and election. Remember, we were predestinated to conform to a certain particular way of doing things that God does things. And that is what I'm going to talk about today, because your calling has to do with your success in life. Remember, when God calls a man or a woman, there is a particular place, a particular position that you have to fit in. Like the scriptures have told us, there is a one body, but different parts of that particular body. The hand is different from the head. The toe is different from your waist. So it's one body of Christ but different parts of it. You might be, you might say, okay, I am only the, the, the bottom part of uh, his feet, Christ's feet, but still you're still part and parcel of Christ because without the bottom part, without the feet, a human being is not complete. So if you are not there, and if you are not uh, part and parcel of Christ, then that means Christ himself is not complete. That is deep, brother, sister. Because when you talk of a complete human being, you're talking about a human being with all the parts that a human being is supposed to, to have. So when you lose a hand, you're not a complete human being. You might have an artificial limb, but that limb will never ever be part and parcel of you. There's always a throbbing in that particular limb that is broken. So it is important for you to look and see what is it that God has called you to do in this life. And in Romans 11, 25, 29, it says, gifts and callings are without repentance. All that means is you don't even need to be a Christian. Like I said in the beginning, Pharaoh was called to do what he was doing. So what is a bespoke position? It is something that is tailor-made. It started in the way back when they used to make tailor-made suits. They still do in central London. You can go and get measured. And that suit is tailored to you. Even if you've got a pot belly, they put a pot belly there to suit you. So that suit will not fit anybody else, but anyone else can try and wear it, but it will not be the same. So what is the meaning of a bespoke position? It is anything commissioned to a particular specification, altered or tailored to the customs, tastes, 
or usage of an individual purchaser. And finally, to a general marketing and branding concept implying exclusivity and limited runs. That's why some of these Nike limited trainers are so expensive. I think one of them, they call it the Jesus something. It's got water in it and so forth. And it costs about a thousand US dollars because it is bespoke, exclusive. That's why it is expensive. All these uh, celebrity you know, uh, products that they sell that are exclusive. But now I want you to apply that now to your calling in life. Your particular position that God has given you is so tailor-made to you that not even a prophet can do it. I shall repeat. Your particular position in this life that God has fashioned for you is so specific, particular, specified to you that not even a prophet can try to do it. They might try, but they'll fail. Not even your pastor will be able to do it. Your pastor will misunderstand you, thinking you're doing something wrong, but you are just being honest to the way God has made you. And that's why you need to surrender lock, stock, and barrel to Jesus Christ so that he can mold himself into you. And your mission in life is tied to your receiving the Holy Ghost. Because when you receive the Holy Ghost, you begin to act like Jesus. You know that song that we sing, so that people will see Christ only always. That's what brings in the call for you as a Christian brother or a Christian sister. So it is important to realize that God, before the foundation of the world, tailor made that particular position to fit you and you alone. No one else can achieve what you do. That must give you confidence, brother, sister. And here are the reasons why people fail to discover their calling. Number one, you are afraid of trusting God. And you don't create enough space, a safe space, what I call the safe spaces for you and Jesus. Because you must steal away in that little place Talk to him and ask him, Lord, what is it that you called me to do? Remember in St. John's 9, verse 1 to 3, <coughs> excuse me, the disciples saw that man who was blind and they said, oh, is it his parents or himself that is sin that is blind? And what did Jesus say? He was born that way so that he could show, exude the grace of God. So he was born blind to bring in a testimony. <coughs> that is another message we'll discuss uh, in the future. That sometimes what you think is a disadvantage in your life is actually the very thing that you were called to do. And many of us, after you read Middle Age, you stop searching and you give up, you will never find it. And the biggest one, the most problematic one in this year area, in this generation, trying to be like somebody else, trying to be like a celebrity. Many times you go into church, you find more uh, women with uh, uh, makeup than outside, trying to live like uh, the celebrities. But remember, you were called differently. You are not uh, part and parcel of Hollywood. We are a part and parcel of heaven. And remember, heaven and hell are parallel. They will never, ever meet. So what do you need to do? You need to surrender everything that you are to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, here I am. Use me according to the way you want me to be used. Help me to understand and to share all the things that you called me today. It is important, brother, sister, to realize 
that that bespoke calling that God has called you to be is very important. And when you are able to reach that utopia of your bespoke calling, when you are able to reach that absolute of your calling, that is what brings in proper joy, true joy. Some people may look at you and say, oh, he's miserable. But right inside there, you're bubbling like a little spring, waters of life, waters of Jesus, bubbling in your soul. But sometimes you can't even contain it because you surrendered all. Then it becomes God and you and God and you alone. Anything else becomes irrelevant. So brother, sister, make your calling and election sure. Find out what you were born to do. That is the only way you can find peace and tranquility in this life because your life should not be controlled by other people, but let it be controlled by Christ. And then you will reach that sublime position of peace and tranquility while everybody else is running around with masks and all, running away, taking 16 baths a day, afraid of the coronavirus. You're safely tucked away. For under his wings, we are safe between now and eternity. God bless you. I hope you find your calling. And your calling was not given to you by a pastor. It was given by God. So if your pastor is teaching something outside of the Bible, that's the time to stop using that pastor. Let it be within the confines of the Bible. You must live within the confines of the Bible because on that day, you're going to stand before Almighty Jehovah, not as a church, no, as an individual. You're going to say, my pastor said, that may not mean anything. You might look over in hell and see your pastor over there because you don't know who is saved and who is not. The only one I know right now in the whole world that is saved is me. I don't know about anybody else. And it's none of my business. My business is not my business. I keep my business, my nose into my business. I am the only one that's going to make the rapture. I'm the only one that's going to heaven. That's how I know I can never tell who else is going because it's none of my business. God bless you. And shalom.